Well, with a concussion, we think that it's rotatory or rotational acceleration of the brain within the skull that produces the concussion effect. Uh, so if my hand uh, is the brain and this hand is the skull, it's movement of the brain within the skull that produces concussion. And we think it's rotational movement or like a jiggle of the brain rather than linear acceleration. But the exact uh, explanation for what goes on in the brain is unknown. If the player is conscious or it returns to consciousness within seconds, uh, then you can start an assessment. And a lot of that has to do with asking questions initially. Um, you as a trainer, you want to reassure them first and foremost that they're going to be okay. Then you need to assess where they're at. Um, you know, and, and that just takes a few questions, you know, um, asking them if they know where they are, um, asking them if they know the score, um, you know, where does it hurt, uh, you know, a number of simple questions like that and just establish um, their level of consciousness. Assuming that, uh, you know, th this player is complaining of, you know, uh, head issues only, and there's nothing neck or back, you can determine that it is safe to, safe to move them. And the sooner you can get them off the playing field, the better, uh, because we do consider, you know, most playing fields as kind of a, I guess you call it a, a dangerous atmosphere. Certainly speaking about concussion specifically and or brain injury, I think any penetrating trauma, uh, certainly that's concerning. Uh, any seizure activity, a prolonged loss of consciousness, potentially up to a minute. I think any deterioration of status at any point after the injury certainly is an indication to have someone seen. Uh, I think that uh, uh, repetitive vomiting uh, certainly is a concern. Um, and I think that uh, any evidence of C-spine injury, as I said, any coexisting injury that's concerning, obviously, is, is a concern. Um, beyond that, I think that if you recognize that there's any transient uh, paralysis at any time uh, and or uh, complaints of numbness, what have you, in the limbs, that would also be an indication to be seen. A player who comes to me in the middle of a, uh, a game or a practice and uh, says that they're not feeling right and uh, you know, it says uh, that they don't feel like they can continue. Um, there needs to be, uh, you know, a, a removal f from play so there can be an assessment happen. A lot of it is, uh, you know, asking questions and listening to them, but also watching how they respond. And uh, you know what, it, it always comes down to, uh, if in doubt, keep them out. There are four minimal criteria for return to play. Uh, an individual has to be asymptomatic at rest, asymptomatic with exertion. Uh, they have to have a normal clinical evaluation by a healthcare provider. Uh, and beyond that, then return to normal baseline testing on computer-based or neuropsychological testing. First of all, we can prevent these injuries. Okay. We need to make sure that our athletes are capable of doing the skills so that they have the physical and the, the, the mental or cognitive ability to do it so that they need to be physically fit, what we call physically literate, so that they know how to move, but they also understand what it is they're doing and why they're doing it. And if you put all those pieces together, they're gonna to be able to make smart decisions and smart decisions are gonna help keep them safe. There needs to be a, a great level of trust between the coach and the trainer. And, um, you know, the trainer has to be allowed to be the trainer and the trainer needs to be a trainer, not an assistant coach. And uh, that trainer needs to be in charge of, uh, you know, the health of the players at all times. And the coach needs to respect that the, uh, the trainer is doing uh, the best that they can with their level of knowledge and training and that they're going to make an assessment on a player regardless where they're hurt in their body of whether it's safe for that player to continue uh, or not continue. What, what is the case now is in terms of, of head injuries, if you go back and you play too soon, you're much more likely to have a recurrence and a more serious recurrence of it. And, and, the, and, the, and the best thing for you now is that five years ago, none of your teammates would have understood uh, the, you know, the, the problem of a, of a concussion and, and why you're not playing. They'd look at you and say, you look fine, you're not limping, why, uh, why are you not playing? Now, many more of your teammates know 
um, because of what they've seen on television about the consequences of head injuries. Many more parents know, many more coaches know. It's much more possible for you now to get your story across that in fact you just don't feel right at all. You don't know what it is, but you don't feel right. Well, that's the message that you need to deliver. You know what, your, your brain is made of gray matter and uh, the gray matters. So let's take care of it, let's be educated and let's, uh, let's make sure that uh, we do all we can to uh, keep uh, our athletes' brains healthy.